Hi listeners, welcome to my channel. We are entering the phase where Uranus, the planet of sudden changes, sudden insight, sudden brilliance and freedom, would be meeting Venus, our heart, our creativity. And then it would be meeting Mercury, our mind. And then it would be meeting Sun, our spirit, over the course of next 10 days, impelling us to do things differently. All of this is happening while we have the Scorpio full moon on 26th or 27th of April which is intense in itself but it comes with Pluto rebirth as Pluto is going retrograde at the same time. In line with this energy, the dance of the planets over the next few days came as a discourse to me. So I'm putting it in a narrative format. The narration of this dialogue is done from the perspective of Venus. Venus is our heart, our desire, the part of ourselves that's most human. Please have patience with this piece as it's my first and it's a little bit long. But it has taken me a while to research all the astrological elements embedded throughout the discourse. I hope you'll enjoy this format. I thank you for being part of this journey with me. You can listen to these updates on YouTube or on podcast formats, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcast. I will leave the links in the description for you. My name is Charu and I'm your host on this journey. So let's dig in. Background Plot Venus meets Uranus in an erratic, inconvenient, out-of-the-blue meeting. And in that meeting, as Venus, our heart and choices are just about coming out of cultural and social events, Venus is trying to have a budding ego, have its own individuality, find its place of pride even with the dignity Taurus has given it. Meanwhile, Uranus has this narrow alley, seedy meeting with it, offering it to go home with it. And forget about its dignity. Forget about its pride for a bit. Live a little now with me, it says. Why not consummate now with me in my fall and have a bit of wild ride, it tempts. Venus has invited Saturn and Aquarius home in two or three days, who she's hoping would bring in the revolution in her life that she's hoping for without the seediness as it's a dignified gentleman of the two. Yet the throwdown is inviting to the budding ego of Venus. Plus Uranus is down and dirty without having to be exactness of Saturn. That's taking all the fun away from her life. How many karma I need to wash to get to you? She complains in her dreams to Saturn. How many hoops you have planned for me? She berates. She berates the Saturn that has now moved from the degrees of collective karma to degrees of individual karma, where it's making Venus go through natural progression of states of consciousness, slowly giving her what he knows she's prepared to receive in a dignified manner and nothing more than that at this stage. But Uranus is offering the world Uranus is currently the dispositor of Venus. It's the dominant effect on Venus, on our heart. And we do reckless things of being tempted by the throwdown. We go bizarre attractions. We get a weird head haircut. We bet the farm. We feel turned on by the inconsistency of the heart, of the money, of the style, of the art. We get into people who would never be available. Stage of walk out on what was good for us. Elope with a paria. Socialize with misfits. And mix our style with bizarre. Overall, we make impulsive choices in love, creativity, money and women. Over long term choices or at least we are tempted to. We know Saturn will walk into us doing the deed. We forget Saturn is in sign of ruler of Uranus. He is the ultimate boss. He is the dispositor of the Saturn-Uranus tango we are living this year. So was that throwdown important? Was that brush in the CD alley with Uranus important? Maybe. 
can be avoided? Well, we can tell Saturn we like a throwdown once in a while. Maybe Saturn doesn't have to take Venus so seriously all its while. Now the discourse begins. Saturn responds to Venus and her pleas. It isn't me. I'm just a reflection of the structures you need to make all those desires you have to come true. You want it long term. That's what it takes for long term. You want it different. It takes time to create different. That's successful as well. You want it elite. You want it eclectic. You want it intelligent. You want it successful. It takes time to age things to that order. Disorderly is easy. You are seeing easy. You don't seem to want it. You know it's easy. You know it's not what's going to make you happy. You know it's a fling. You know it's a bubble. Though you like the disruption it's causing. Because you feel its shenanigans are making a statement to me about what you want. And to be honest, they are. It takes me two years to incorporate the Uranus disruption in your life. Whenever it happens in our waning dance. Last Uranus and me danced in 1975 and 77 like that. Don't worry, we don't have two years of this. We have already done one year of it. That was last year. But it will take me this year to incorporate all the elements you have asked for. My laws are written in stone. We make the vows that last. But my promise is that every air season, I will show you some love. But every fixed season like we have right now, you know we would fight. You know fixed elements of your life will clutter with each other. They will clash with each other. Venus responds, Yes, I know you will make my desires come true in long term, but why do you suffocate my flight through restrictions and loneliness right now? Saturn in Aquarius responds, Because I manifest the best when I'm alone with you. When you don't have other people, when you don't have parties, when you don't have throwdowns distracting you. Then in that moment, you tell me your truth. That's when you go to what you truly want. That's when you think of subjects like long-term visions, your end game, thoughts of mortality, of equality, of environment and good of all. Else the temptations and distractions, they run you over. You're happy with Uranus shenanigans in that hoopla. Jupiter already came to visit my path in, Jan in January and February and blew the whole path lit. Everybody danced, rejoiced with Jupiter when it was walking the degrees I'm walking right now. Forget all about the things we talked of last year. Then I had to come and walk that road after him to clean up the mess he had made. Yes, he broadened the path. He lit up the minds of people. But someone has to create the road to walk on. I always have to be the matured one because I am the one in my element here to deliver the good this year. Venus wondered, can it be easier though? Smoother maybe? Air season is the next Gemini season. Is that what Saturn was hinting towards when things will become easier? She knew Scorpio full moon of 27th of April was bringing a fixed T-square with Saturn and Uranus. Scorpio full moon in itself brings a lot of dysfunction and our own undoing to surface. Now with the Saturn Uranus T-square, with Saturn as the apex, she knew a tough decision would need to be taken with long-term implications. She would have to evaluate what's the cost of taking that tough decision. That full moon at the degree of deep sea divers would take us all to the journey of root causes, quest to understand our unconscious desires and undoing as well. As the good and the bad comes up to the surface, I would need to evaluate if I am ready to pay the price. 
ready to pay the price to wait for what's real instead of the romp in the hay. Everyone will play chess on the social scene and be a politician trying to deny their responsibility when the right thing would be to take their responsibility, their part in the unfolding. Little did she know, Saturn had a friend. But none of the astrologers were talking about him. Talking about friends of Saturn is not a popular topic. It's not a good clickbait, you see. It was Rahu. Yes, Rahu, the headless monster that feeds our desire. He was making a trine, a supporting bond with Saturn since 9th of April. He had promised to stay with Saturn all the way to September till Saturn decided how to clean up the mess that was made. Rahu, like Saturn, is not sign of its exaltation and the two together are dancing in an air trine that makes the intellectual, the communicator, the idealist, the planner, the long-term student and the dreamer in all of us to come to life. How does he help me? Venus wondered, like you. Rahu enters the scene. Rahu tells Venus, don't worry, we have our own meeting on 17th of May. You won't miss Uranus, I trust. Trust me. Don't worry. When I will tell you on 17th of May, why did you need to wait for me? You will be happy. I am no charmer, but I am at least what you want. What will you do till then? Venus asked Rahu. I am working with Saturn. I will help you through the, uh, through the upcoming closure with the 27th of April Scorpio full moon, responded Rahu. How? Aren't you the plague, Rahu? asked Venus in dismay. Rahu pulled his head down, saying, No, no, I am not the plague. No, I am confused with my tail, Ketu, which is normally linked with plague. I am the foreign element. That's a drug. I am the poison and I am the drug. So are you working with Saturn, the authorities, you say? asked Venus in shock. Yes, I am. But I am also deception. So, of course, I am helping Saturn the authorities too. Responded Rahu with that evil smile. You will see the strategy on Full Moon in Scorpio of the games we play. But I am also the drug and I am not the plague. Plague was my tail, Ketu, which hooked up with Saturn when it was in Capricorn in September of 2019. You remember? That's when they lived together. Later, when Pluto matched Saturn in January of 2020, plague mutated. Pluto, Pluto continues to mutate, mutate the, this plague. It gives it death and rebirth in different versions. So whenever Pluto is strong like it's now, and when it's standing still about to go retrograde, Pluto spawns new versions, new muta mutations. But once it settles down by May, the mutations would pause. And once Jupiter comes into Pisces partially in May and fully in December, healing will be there. Though you see, in 2019, Ketu made Saturn believe that situation will work out easier than it thought. It didn't think Pluto will meet Saturn in January of 2020 and change the whole landscape making it political and strategic. I am similar in that to Rahu, eh, to Ketu. As Rahu the drug, I also play the deception right now. I am the drug, but I am also the deception. Because I play that deception game with Saturn the authority in making people believe that I make a situation more promising than it is. I will cost you more than you are ready to pay. But I am the poison and I am the drug. I am the solution. I am not the plague. Saturn, the authorities have access to Ketu, the epidemic, the plague, but it's not easy. They only have access to plague when they play the Sagittarius games, 
the games of belief system fights the divides the religions the discriminations the flights the airlines every time they rile you up they are able to access ketu my tail the pandemic the more you disconnect from the biases the more you disconnect from the pandemic also who has not heard of travel crashes when ketu is in sagittarius it happens every 19 years airlines collapse air crashes aircraft industry bankruptcy happens whenever ketu goes into sagittarius every 19 years hold on hold on venus lost her cool what are you saying we have a lunar eclipse in sagittarius not known on 26th of may with ketu Are you saying aircrafts will crash or airlines will go bankrupt or are you saying Saturn can again access a pandemic by playing with belief system and fights at that time Rahu held his head down Last time this eclipse of 26th of May had happened was in 2002 Exactly on 26th of May 2002 actually it was visible in Asia And unfortunately on 25th of May 2002 China Airlines flight 611 crashed. It's never a good idea to fly when K2 in Sagittarius eclipse is happening especially not in the area of visibility. And this year the visibility covers a lot of area including whole of North America compared to 2002. But we are racing to May. I was talking right now of right now and how I am helping you right now. Let's focus on the current moment. That's the road to success with Rahu and Gemini, remember? Venus blinked. What else is road to success? Rahu spoke. To ignore opinions. Other people's feelings even. Their beliefs and intuition entirely. Focus on data. focus on science focus on mathematics i am the one driving you to collect data on everything and anything i am the one who's teaching you to become the unending source of information of knowledge and wisdom in your field but i am also the one who's teaching you to do all of this without personal prejudice become the clear and make others clear about their own thoughts through intellectual and two-sided conversations without using the bias of i believe and hence you should be wrong think and believe are two separate things indulge your immediate environment instead of longing for far away places right now don't do the things where you seem to be the only teacher and not the student it's the time to be the student get that youthful curiosity back scan the neighborhood by foot when you could scan the local newspapers don't wait to be given a podium to speak get involved in the discourse but remember always have less bias in your tone the tale of mine ketu would help you release a lot of ideologies and ideological wars as well as those ideologically driven gurus who try to use extreme emotions for getting a cult going but don't you want to know how i'm supporting saturn on the full moon this month that everyone seems to be dreading about and i will continue to offer the support till september Venus wakes up to the current moment and responds. Yes, we can all do with some help right now. Tell me how your friendship with Saturn is helpful to me and to all of us. Rahu explains. Well, I march into the wild and unpredictable, into the unexplored realms. I expand the self-consciousness you have. I am the path you must take to grow. I create unexpected situations unique to each person. and in that unexpected situation each one of us need to pay through saturn in their own unique ways but the payment is being asked we in fact have been asking each one of you for the payment since april 
I am the Maya, I am the entanglement that makes you incarnate again and again. I am the compulsion, I am the discontent in you that keeps you hungry, keeps you going. You will pay the payment because you want me. But without Saren, I would take you in all sorts of useless pursuits. Maybe just drink your payment away. With Saren, that payment becomes investment. Like in your knowledge growth, in connections, in explorations, in media, in business, in self-made wealth, in platform, in technology. Venus always gets her ears turned upside down when a payment is involved. She asks with curiosity, What is this payment you both want from me? Rahu smiles. Venus, you gotta learn to think broader than you are and bigger than before. Every time Saren scares you, you keep going back to wanting small for you and for all. You feel world is a hostile place. You feel lonely but you avoid all social contacts. Every time I ask you to open up and expand your carefully put boundaries, you curl in further. You want to be famous, you want to be popular, you want to be abundant, but you seem to be afraid of people. Friends feel like burden, like responsibility and restriction to you. You want to be on a platform with your work projected to the world, yet you don't want any kind of criticism and feel being judged all the time. The very arena you fear, the group you run from, and organizations you find daunting, that's precisely where you learn more about yourself. The cost, the payment, it's asking of you, apart from the investments I mentioned you must make in your knowledge, in your connections, in your explorations, in media, in business, in self-made wealth, in platform and technology. The payment I'm asking of you is the payment to learn to be with other people. Learn to be with other people in symbiosis with them. Learn that you're an important part of society's evolution. So every time you hold back from the collective, you are not paying the price of existence itself. The fear of being rejected is the price you must pay. Giving up rigid ideals of what and who you should be is the price you would have to pay. Not committed to a goal or an outcome doesn't make you free. Price of patience and persistence are obvious with Saturn as you know. Venus broods and asks, what about visualization? I started those with Aries new moon as it was at the degree of law of attraction. I visualize what I want, what more is needed. Rahu broods. We both, Saturn and me, can only think of tangible things. We need the thing to be in front of us. If we are to think of them and manifest them, I cannot manifest a feeling, a wish. I need to manifest and help you move forward on what is in front of me. So if you want me to manifest, you need to touch it, feel it tactically. I need to have concrete models to work with when I make your future path evident. But if you put three blocks in front of me with a puzzle to solve, I would show you the way. If you write on a paper two lines on what you want to manifest, I would help you write the rest of the story on how to. If you write the first three sentences of the plot, I would help you finish your novel. If you put a model of a building you want to create in front of my eyes to see every day, I will help you build it. That's why sometimes the throwdown is okay. Sometimes the wrong with the wrong person is okay. Because physically you experience what you want. And with that one physical experience, I can take you to what you want. It has to feel real to me for me to move forward. Visualization is good, but tactile, feel it, touch it, models of what you want are most important to me. And that's where I operate the best. Venus interjects, hold on, hold on. 
So it's okay to deviate with Uranus and get that one night stand, that unsuitable, unwise choice while I wait for Saturn, my long term one. Rahul laughs and responds, I'm saying you will pay the price for me. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you will always pay for me more than I am worth. You will always pay for my karmic future path and growth more than I deserve. And that payments come through false choices and false starts sometimes. Uranus will always bring opportunities for those false choices and false starts. And you will always be left paying more than you bargained for. But if that's what you need to come out of where you are, that's what it is. But remember, Saturn is aligned with your forward destiny. You are more likely to meet your destiny if you walk the longer path, if you take that longer road, if you take the heavier responsibility, if you consult that older guide or person, if you look at your past record to help you move forward, your solid foundation, your heritage, your predecessors, your past is giving you the stable ground you need to walk your future path on. It's more likely for an older person, a father figure, superior to support you in your life path and growth no guts no glory was great to get started but we need to get more strategic more discerning now saturn is your way out saturn is who you need to align with venus nods so the clash of strength of will and determination that comes with this full moon of 27th of April, you recommend I match the volatility with making the wiser choice, taking the longer path, drop a past karmic load, pay my debt and use your support to choose the path of going by facts without bias and make use of the resources available in my immediate surroundings versus looking for far off support or pie in the sky stuff. My path is progressive. It's not going to be what it was. So hoarding past model of my life and my old possessions, they will just block me. Having the past physically in front of me will only make me manifest more of my past. Having more evidences of future sitting in front of me every day in small pieces will help me reach more of my future path. Similarly, not taking the same bias against people would work for me. I need to learn the new art of relating to others. My need for stability and security shouldn't keep me stuck in the past, but it should also guide me to make a wiser choice for my future. I do need a stable ground to stand on for me. To do the throw down my style with the right one in the right place and not in the CD back alley. Just because I want it now. Because I deserve better. She was not ecstatic, but she knew what she had to do and the choice she was being asked to make. And I hope you do too. This was the discourse of the planets today and for the next 10 days. I hope you enjoyed this format. Much love from me. Thank you.